Welcome back to 7 Minute Stories. I'm here with Megan Courtney. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Are you excited? Yeah, I am. I, I am. I can see that you are. Yeah. <laughs> not nervous I, at all. Um, I was really excited when Mike reached out and asked me to do this because uh, these actually, these 7 Minute Stories and the 167 is uh, the reason why my husband and I actually came to New Life for the first time. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I grew up in the area, um, grew up going to a Southern Baptist church, a small Southern Baptist church, but then I went to college and decided, eh, I don't need church, right? Um, you know, went on about my life. Uh, my husband and I have lived in the area for a while, and we just kind of looked at each other one day and we're like, I think there's more, right? It's time. It's time. So, um, you know, I was like, well, how do people find a church, right? Is, there's not like a dating app for churches. Oh my gosh. Is that a gap in the market? <laughs> I think that we could maybe fix that, but I'm kind of like, you know, how do you, how do you do your match? You know, how do you do this? And I'm like, well, the internet has everything. <laughs> so, um, I happened to be, I was going to my mom's house and it's close to here. And I saw a whole bunch of people were over at the veterans park. They were picking up trash and they had a shirt on that said, you know, we love you gardener or something mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, Oh, that, okay. New life. I know that's a church. And so, you know, just me, I'm, I'm not, shy about anything. I just got out and said, hey, tell me about your church. So talk to them a little bit. And um, they said, hey, we actually have this podcast if you want to hear a little bit about the folks that go there. Um, so check it out. I was like, okay. And then I went out there and just, you know, immediately start trying to figure out, you know, are they the people that go here crazy? Absolutely. Um, we are. <laughs> you know, are, you know, can I, can I fit in? And it's like, I started hearing stories and I was like, these are real people. Cause you, you kind of assume going in, all oh, these people, you know, it's very religious and every, you know, nobody's got any real problems. And mm -hmm. then you get out there and it's like, here it's all here it is it's just right here so yep. i we're loved all, it we're all in it together yep yep so um so yeah like i said i you know grew up in the area went to a very uh like i like to call it fire and brimstone uh southern baptist church i actually went to baker university so then you know kind of methodist so i'm kind of floating around and in, in what i would call religion at the time and uh, my husband same uh small baptist church and um, got saved at 14 and it was very much, I heard the story a lot. I actually heard it several times in the seven minute stories. It was, I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's a realization of like, wow. Okay. So it was definitely out of fear. Um, fast forward, go to college, did what a lot of college kids do, right? I rebelled completely. Didn't go too ultra far, but enough to definitely not, um, to kind of walk away from my spiritual self. Um, and then, you know, like I said, my husband and I just, we're looking at each other, we're in our forties. We don't really have a community. First of all, that was actually the main thing that we were looking for is we're like, oh, every, every church is the same, right? It's basically the same. It's going to be the same boring hymns. No offense to those who like the old rugged cross. I love that too. But, you know, you just, you kind of think it's all the same. You just assume that you know everything. And um, I very quickly realized when I got here and I, people are, you know, opening the doors. The very first person I saw is actually now the person who leads my husband's table, which is John Myers. And he had a big smile on his face. Hey, we're so happy to see you. We're like, oh. Well, wow, okay, these people are nice. All right, I can I can dig this. You go in, you hear the music because we're late. My husband and always makes us late. I'm I'm early, but my husband makes us late. <laughs> go in, you hear the music, and I'm like, I I think I hear a guitar and some drums. Like I'm like, let's hurry up. Like let's get in here. I want to check this out. And people are, they're raising their hands, and we're just like, this is this is wild. This is, this could, and people are wearing, of course, we're like way overdressed. And so a very eye-opening experience to know that um, even in, gar you know, like, because you're thinking Gardner is super conservative, all the churches are the same. We obviously knew nothing. So, um, but what I, I really, I really want to share that because I, I'm four months, we've been going to New Life for four months and we've had just huge revelations and I wish I would have known that, right, going into it, because I think that you go in with a lot of intrepidation. You don't know if these people, 
if you can jive with these people. And I've definitely found all sorts of people that go to new life. And I'm like, I feel like there's like a pot, there was like a pot for every lid at this church, which I really love that. But so the first time I came here was um, May 29th. I remember it's because it was before my birthday and uh, you were preaching and you sold us because you lit a bowl on fire. Oh, everybody loves the pyrotechnics. Yes. My husband was like, this place has good music. They're nice. And the pastor just literally. I almost lost something. my eyebrows <laughs> that Sunday. Yeah, you, you you pulled out that first thing and you lit it. You lit it pretty close to your face, and my husband is like, "This place is amazing." So <laughs> close up um, magic. <laughs> so, um, but what we heard that day, I'll never forget because what we heard that day has just completely changed our lives. Which was, I mean, you talked about the Havel and everything, and of course we went back and we we watched the the the. Um, the other sermons that kind of led up to that. But what we heard that day was once you are born again, once you are saved, you're God's child, there is nothing, there is nothing that you can do that make that will make him love you any less. And I'm gonna try not to cry <laughs> because um growing up, everything was performance based. You got saved, that's good, but Fire and brimstone is just like a half a second away, right? All your thoughts, everything that you do is like it, it, you're just on that teetering point. And it has taken us, it, we're still kind of processing that, to be honest with you, because there's a lot, there's a lot to kind of back up with that. But um, so that, that has really changed our lives. And then, um, uh, Mike Ward, who is uh, kind of like probably our closest person in the church, and I, I know with a lot of people, um, we go to the first week meeting, we sign up, we say we want to go to Freedom, which was another thing that really interested us about the church. And he calls us and he's like, so um, you like new life? Yep. Okay. Well, we need to get you rebaptized. So like, hey, by the way, we're doing that like in a couple weeks can I go ahead and just sign you up? Like he is like an ultimate salesman. And my husband and I are looking at each other. We're like, well, we've been baptized. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to get rededicated and just like, and do it out of choice this time. Because he had an hour long conversation with me. He had an hour long conversation with Lance and really pointed out that like, you are in a completely different spot than you were when you were 14. And you, you're starting to understand more this is the first step to the rest of your life. And then when you go to freedom, you know, things will just start happening to you. And I was just like, sure. Just sure. start fresh, not out of fear, but out of love. Exactly. Out of, out of your choice, out of love, better understanding. And then he's telling us all this stuff that he's seen happen in prayer groups and everything that's kind of, you know, that he's seen personally. And even though we believe him, we're like, sure, for other people, right? And um, I'm a pretty cynical person by nature. And so I, I'm immediately like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll go. And I go and I meet my table people and, you know, just uh, my table ladies at Freedom. And we start, we start talking and I'm like, okay, these people have real problems just like me. All right. And then you just start kind of opening up. And then, like, what I love is that, Mike's like teaching us how to pray in a very practical perspective. It's not flowery. There's no real like super strict formula. And it's just, and it's really practical because you're literally praying for something. <laughs> you're praying for something and, it, and the structure. And uh, I remember the very first week, uh, I was really having a lot of problems with my knee. And uh, we all fumbled through the prayer. But, um, I started to really feel a lot of relief after that. I, and so you just start to be like, wow, this actually, this is, stuff is real. And it kind of freaks you out a little bit. It does, because yeah. then you're just like, oh. And then, um, so I'm starting to see God move in my life. And um, I wanted to share the latest thing, um, which is uh, I really value uh, I've been kind of really dealing with pride a lot. That's that's kind of I think my big, my big boulder, um, 
And the other day I was on a I was on a conference call. Oh man, I was patting myself on the back for this idea that I pitched that's you know gonna run nationwide and everything. And then um, when I was doing my I was doing my lesson afterwards, um, it was about pride, and I was praying afterwards, and um, and God spoke to me. It was the first time it was clear, mm-hmm. and He was like, um, "So you think you're smart? Guess what? Like, who do you think made your brain and the synapses that run through your body um, and gave and gave you your thoughts? Um, that was me. Like." all those great ideas they're not necessarily yours like just putting it into putting it into perspective um and i and it was like in the most loving way being like i'm god and um you are of me and uh you need to you know to recognize that and understand that pride is getting in your way of uh your relationship with me so in the most loving, fatherly way. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You can you can take a word of rebuke, but in an, a love and tender care. Yeah, and like I said, and I think that's, you know, that that's incredibly wise because I know people that that do that. They say like, oh, if I get a word from the Holy Spirit in a board meeting, and I don't stand up and go, the Holy Spirit has, sp-, but they just say, hey, what about this idea? Yeah. And then if somebody later comes to them, they say, where'd you get that idea? And I go, well, I have the Holy Spirit, and He leads me into wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't um, it wasn't like Charlton Heston, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't this. It was more of just like it was just a very clear voice um, that pointed it out. And I mean, it gave me chills. I mean, it was it was it was wild. I mean, it was it was it was crazy. And then I was like, I love this. This is I just want more. So it's just I'm just releasing more and more of these thoughts of religion that I've kind of built up of what of what it is to be a Christian and I'm just releasing that and knowing that all it matters is my relationship with God that's good well yeah. I hope that uh, helps some of our listeners out there I hope you guys enjoyed this thank you so much for coming on and doing your seven minute story I, like like this is I'm like this is so good like I love your story <laughs> and I think it's just the beginning for you guys thank you We'll see you guys next time here on 7-Minute Stories.